The tugboat, for its size, is the most powerful craft to float. And the star tugs are the power behind the docks and waterways that make up Brendam Docks. This is Tux. It was a busy day at Brindham Docks. Salty and Porter were washed off their wheels with work. So much work in fact that Sir Topham Hatt had to send Thomas to help them. After a good day's worth of work, Thomas was asked to take some coal trucks to a new dock that opened at the other end of Brendam. When he arrived, he saw a steam tug he'd never seen before. Hello, you must be th Thomas, right? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, yes I am. Nice to meet you. I'm Ten Cents. Where did you come from? From Big Sea Port. We crossed the Atlantic Ocean to come here to work again. Guess you could say we came to do, do some really re useful work. Wow, sounds interesting. Say Thomas, do you like stories? Yes, why? I'll tell you the tale of how, me, of how we got here, if you like. And this is the story Ten Cents told Thomas. Back in the 1920s, the Star Tug fleet was always busy. There was always a job needed to be doing for them and the Zent Stacks. The Star Tug fleet was always trying their best to please Captain Star, their owner and boss. But then, ten years later, came the Diesel Tugs. They were new and impressive in big city port, and they started taking over both Star Tugs and Sad Stacks work. The problem got so bad that both fleets went bankrupt. Captain Zero of the Sad Stacks had to sell everything to fund his retirement. Captain Star, on the other hand, couldn't do such a thing to his Star Tugs. So he decided to use his wealth to buy all eight of the Star Tugs and place them in a dry dock. From there they started the Big City Naval Museum. Our story now takes us to one month ago and in that time OJ, Big Mac, Warrior, Top Hat, Grampus and Hercules hadn't moved from their dry dock. Ten Cent, Sunshine and Ariel were lucky. They began taking in turns to take passengers and tours around the harbour. One day, Ten Cents was getting ready for his turn when he started looking at the harbour in, in wonder. Are you okay, hey Ten Cents? Hey, oh, sorry Sunshine. I just, I just miss working in big city port. We all do, Ten Cents. At least you get to go out. I'm stuck here looking at Warrior all the time. Who, who do you think I feel, looking at a piece of glass of yours all this time? Oh, very funny, warrior. Alright, you two. Enough, enough. Besides, we got many more years to come to this. Might as well make the rest of it. There must be something we can do. No, ten cents. How do you... I don't know what to think. Poor OJ. Ten Cents wanted to help his friends, but he had to leave with his tour. As he passed through the port, Ten Cents saw once again how much had changed. He soon passed a diesel tug pulling four barges. Get out of the way, you useless floating kettle! Get back to the scrapyard! Scrapyard? There's nothing wrong with me! Come back here! Don't go making fights with them. Hey, who said that? 
Tensors was then surprised to see Zebedee, a former member of the Z-Stacks. Zebedee, I thought all Z-Stacks were sold up with her. I was. The company that bought us was in financial trouble. They could afford to want all five of us, so I was sold. What are you doing here? Steam talks that us aren't allowed to work in the port anymore. I know. On my way to the scrapyard, I am. What? I'm so I'm sorry, Zebedee. Why should you? Startups like you always hated us at stacks. Those days are over. I wish they weren't. I would love to do some work again. Well, I had better be off. They've allowed me one last trip around the port. Trip down memory lane, I guess. Goodbye. Ten cents watched as Zebedee sailed away. He was worried that the same might happen to him and his friends. His tour last stop was at Lucky's yard, where he met Lucky, the crane tug. Hey, Lucky! Ah, uh, hello, Ten cents. How's museum life treating you? Fine. Yeah. Are you alright? You sound a little down. Aye, it's Lucky's Yard. Closing up shop they are. Lucky's Yard? But that's the only surviving business from the old days. Not now. Time to close up and move on. What about you, Lucky? You're not going to be scrapped too, are you? Nah, not me. I've got myself a new owner and a new job. Hey? How can that be? Nobody uses steam tugs these days. That's why I'm heading to the island of Sodor. What's the island of Sodor? An island off the coast of England. It's a safe haven for steam-powered vehicles to go and do work. They still use steam power there? Aye, rail or sea, and I'm going to help maintain the boats of Brendan Docks. I'll never have to worry about the scrapyard ever again. This gave Ten Cents an idea. That night, he explained his plan to the other Star Tugs. What did you just say? Run away! To the island of Sodor! Uh, can that to be done? I heard of that place. Me too. Fairy tales, if you ask me. It's not a fairy tale, Top Hat. Lucky told me. He's going there himself. Why not us? And how do you think we'll get there? Even if we get out of this dock, you're talking about crossing the Atlantic Ocean to Europe. Only Hercules can make that trip. Well, I'm not giving up. Where there's a will, there's a way. I just know there's a way. If there is one, why not go to sleep, Ten Cents? We might talk about it in the morning. I just know there's a way. I hope there is. Staying here on Bud Hawes is not my idea of a job. I know what you mean. When I arrived in Big City Port, it was a place of opportunities. Yeah, back when you was called with Becca, eh? Yes, but I like the name Ariel more. Come on, you two. Let's go to sleep. I just know there's a way. I just know it. What Ten Cents didn't know was that the whole time they were talking, Zebedee had been watching them. After knowing what it was like to lose everything, Zebedee decided to do the right thing for once. So he went to Frank Star, the son of the original Captain Star, and the tug's owner. Hello, Mr. Star. Hello, Zebedee White. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to talk to you about the Star Tugs, sir, uh, please. I said Stack wants to talk about my Star Tugs. Go on. Well, it's just that they don't seem to like the museum life. I know, but what can I do? My dad would turn over in his grave if I sold them or scrapped them. Well, maybe you don't have to. What if you send them to the island of Sodor? Sodor? Well, as you come to mention it, my son emigrated to Sodor years ago, and I've spoken to him recently. He wants to start his own tug fleet over there. Why didn't I think of this earlier? 
So, will you set them up then? I'll ask my son first thing in the morning. Uh, uh, thanks. Oh, and please don't tell him I was involved in this. I don't want an army of thankful tongues coming up to me. Mum's the word, Sibidi. Thanks for the idea. The next morning, Mr. Frankstar went to see his tucks with good news. Good news, tucks. My son has decided to start his own tug fleet and you are all going to help him. Your son, David Starr. I thought he emigrated. He did, which means you're all going to Sodor. Wow! Really? I don't believe it. Well, I never. Ten cents, you're right. Yes, looks like I owe you an apology, ten cents. Isn't this great, OJ? Great indeed. Yeah, what do we know? You'll be there at the end of the month. I can't wait! Hello, Star Tons! Hey, Sabadee! I thought you was going to be scrapped! I was, but somebody bought me right to the last moment! Someone saved you? No. I don't know. I was told I was to come here to find out. Ah, Sebedee. Glad you're here. I can tell you your news now. My news? What news? When I told my son about you being scrapped, he just had to save you. He what? He saved you from scrap and you're going to Sodor. Uh... Uh, oh, well, I, uh... Come on, Zebedee. You might like it. There is always room for one more. Well, considering that my other option is to be scrapped, I guess I'll have to make friends with you guys now. I take it that's a yes, right? So what do you think, Thomas? Sounds good. What about your friends? What they do in the docks? A lot of work. I help escort large ocean liners in and out of the docks again. Me and Warrior handle the heavy barge loads. Y yeah, a lot different than the garbage barges I used to take. I help with the railway delivery again. Just a job for me. I'm back to be Captain Star's messenger. I delete on on that dry dock anymore. Me, Sunshine, and Tencent are back to our switcher duty. Hey, Sunshine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like it too. What about the other three I've heard about? OJ, Lucky, Zebedee. OJ's retired now. He's decided that he's too old to do all the heavy work in the harbour. He's now part of the Sodor Boating Club in Normanby. He takes holiday makers on tours now. We do miss him, but we do see him now and then. Lucky now works here too at the Sodor Sail Works. He helps repair us again. It's almost like working in big city port again. And what about Zebedee? I was just about to tell you all about Zebedee. Thomas, make Captain Star the third. Captain David Star, remember that ten cents? Aye aye, sir. Now everybody, I would like you to meet Zebedee. Everyone looked to see a low tug enter the dock. Well, I've got to say, yellow actually is not a bad colour. You look great, Zebedee. Much better than being Zed Step Brown. Yeah, I'll just be the grumpy tug that helps Big Mac and Warrior. Not too grumpy, I hope. Welcome to the team, Zebedee. Thomas laughed with his new friends that night, but he'll always remember their story for survival for years. And I hope you all do too.